I went to Brazil and learned the secret. Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me into a Lost Ark Berserker guide about the Berserker's technique engraving. Now the meme as explained at the start of the video is if you translated the Korean patch notes it would turn the Berserker's secret, what's the Korean name of the engraving, into Brazil's secret. With that out of the way, as usual we're going to be talking about stats, skills, a few rotations and a few things along the way. So. First of all, stats. Now this is something in particular that I would go for if I am at 14, 15 plus and I would have access to the relic accessories. So before that, you can still go for a similar build, but I do think that getting at least a 1200 specialization is fairly crucial to rotate your rage or your berserker gauge back to back because this allows you to increase the duration of your bursts and also allows you to regain your burst fairly quickly after it runs out giving you very minimal downtime and um, this is also the reason why berserker's technique for example is a lot less common in earlier levels and some people just don't dis like don't really like the fact that there might be downtimes so high specialization definitely recommended i'm running a mixture of swiftness and crit the reason i don't run full crit is because i do get enough crit from other sources you could also gain go for even more swiftness or lower swiftness a little bit and go for more specialization or even reduce crit entirely but i do feel like this is the best of both worlds and it's giving you a fairly decent combination of a few things here and there so with that out of the way the reason we run specialization or why i prefer to run this one at this point has to do with getting your berserker rage or your burst mode back so as i said burst mode is something that has to be built and not everybody wants to keep on chugging awakening potions to get burst mode going and the reason this is so effective at 30 and 15 which is why i said so once you have enough specialization you can see that we are able to get our gauge up by using one awakening and a tire skill rotation and after that skill rotation we pretty much are back to our berserker's rage and this is the entire secret about this this is also the reason you want to use the chain of vengeance awakening as opposed to the other one because this one grants you a lot more burst mode or fury gauge now how you do this or if you need one or two extra skills is obviously a personal choice there also there are some other key factors here that help you build that gauge so far about stats and how this entire thing works when we're looking at the skills obviously this is a raid build we want finish strike with maximum dps here this is fairly common here and gale wind rune shoulder charge you just want mobility here nothing unusual tempest slash is the very first thing that allows you to build gauge more quickly if you want you can use the focus tripod i personally like it some people opt in for the cooldown because technically the more often you use the better your gauge gain is i don't really think it matters as much it's more of a personal flow in that regard i do prefer having a little bit more fury gauge gain because this allows me to like i said in the beginning of the video go back to your fury with one rotation and your awakening Mountain Crash. Now this one is where a lot of people will have different skills or different opportunities. This is essentially what Madness users would be having on Chainsword. You have Mountain Crash. This is a counter ability. It also allows you to get a good amount of focus. It gives you a, an attack speed buff. And the level 10 or the level 3 tripod is basically just for an extra damage. But the key factor here is this has a short cooldown. It allows you to build a good amount of fury. And also gives you attack speed. Hopefully there's not much difference here aside that you're using the melt tripod because we're no longer below 50% HP because we're not using madness or mayhem so melt is the way to go. Windblade this is another core difference between mayhem users this one definitely take the cooldown reduction take the focus tripod this is one if not your best Yuri generator as you can see I also have the 40% wealth rune on it because of that and then you want Windswift to turn this also into a mobility skill. This is highly valuable in order to rebuild your gauge. We're just going to pop my gauge so I can show you what the gauge building is. Strike Wave, same thing here. Now I'll show you the burst rotation later. If you have trouble getting the burst rotation up and running, you can potentially opt in for Fast Wave. Now for me personally, this is a bit hit or miss. 
Sometimes I do get it off, sometimes I don't get it off, but usually it's about boss movement or not really finding the right opportunity, and fast wave wouldn't help me there. But if you have trouble landing the combo the way I'm going to show it to you, you can always opt in for fast wave instead of the extra damage here. Red dust, this is pretty self-explanatory. Damage amp, you want vital point as high as you can. I only have it on level 2, unfortunately. And red wave for extra damage. We're not using sword storm. We are instead using wind blade. So, as I said, this is basically your skill loadout, which is, aside from the two main differences, almost the same as Mayhem users are doing. But we now have what I would call an optimal rotation, and that is Red Dust, followed by Strike Wave. Then we're going into our Bloody Rush, followed up by Finish Strike. Now, obviously, in the way that I just use it, you're not going to be able to use your... Uh, red dust fully but let's just reset the cooldowns and we're gonna do a quick dps check so what i usually start is let's do a dps check there we go red dust strike wave bloody rush and finish strike the last hit of the finish strike usually lands when your red dust is about to run out this was 17 mil damage in six seconds now this is a complete contrast to what Mayhem Berserkers are able to deliver because your Bloody Rush scales off specialization. So you can see our Bloody Rush damage, our Z ability, deals 210% extra damage. If we're just going to take a look at the Berserk Rage damage, right? We're just going to get the crit going. And we're going to pop the Red Dusts. Alright, we got max crit. Red Dust is on. So just that skill alone deals almost 10 million damage, which is absolutely wild. This is by far your hardest setting nuke toppled off with Strike Wave, which is why ideally you are putting your Red Dust at the front of your rotation. And as I so showed you, I'm just going to show this again, the ideal rotation, Red Dust, Strike Wave, Bloody Rush, and follow up with your finish strike and you can see that this window is fairly tight now there are a few things that you can do first of all what we can do is before we use red dust we use mountain crash to get that speed that just makes the combo a little bit more fluid and gives you just enough frames to make sure this is a lot more reliable you can see this was a much easier hit also you can opt in for more swiftness or technically even some spirit absorption in there and i'll talk about engravings at the end of this video now this, as I said, is what I would say is the core rotation for Berserkers Technique Berserkers. You can obviously rotate other ways around and your Windblade, your Tempest Slash and also your Hellblade are not necessarily linked to Red Dust. However, you can also try and land them in combos like this because Red Dust has almost half of the cooldown, right? So Red Dust has 20 seconds, but it's a 10 second difference here. So there are other mix and match combos you can go for. TLDR is though, Red Dust, Strike Wave, Bloody Rush, follow up with Finish Strike. This is your go-to combo. This is as hard as you can hit. Now the entire thing with the burst regeneration and why this is so important. The key factor here is the awakening engraving. Now this helps us with two things. First of all, at 1445, which I'm currently not at, but I'm going to be at at some point, I personally will be using the Dominion Fang set. For those of you who do not know, the Dominion Fang set provides you with a buff, which increases your damage and reduces your cooldowns, but in return you sacrifice 50% of your awakening damage. So this is also the other reason why we're using Chains of Vengeance, because this one doesn't deal as much damage, but we're not using it as a damage source per se, but again, look at the gauge that this awakening alone generates. That's like half of the bar just with one awakening. And once you have the set and your awakening engraving in place, your awakening is going to be back off cooldown by the time your buff runs out, allowing you to instantly reuse the combo that I showed earlier, right? So we're just going to go ahead. We're just going to use all of our skills. And you can see that Witswift is just a massive generator here. And by using all of our abilities, we are now back into Berserker's Fury mode. And with the specialization, the duration of the burst mode is more or less exactly the same as your awakening cooldown, 
allowing you to go back to back from burst to burst in a matter of five or ten seconds this is why i said you also need to start your every fight should be started with your awakening to get the cooldown on the clock and get your gauge generation it doesn't matter if you don't have red dust for your awakening it doesn't matter if there's not full synergy going you really use this as a gauge generator for your fury to build up and not necessarily for dps this is all about the skills and the rotations as i said the engravings that i personally use now truthfully this is not necessarily the most optimal build of choice but this is something that i would say is a budgety build for most people in essence you can ignore that heavy armor what we're looking at is awakening crystal grudge keen blunt weapon and berserker's technique level one the main reason a lot of people keep berserker's technique at level one is because we want the negative debuff the exhaustion that you would get if you do not have berserker's technique this is also what allows us to instantly start building gauge again if we do not have berserker's technique you will not have the opportunity to instantly build gauge but you will have a 30 second debuff so this is the main reason optionally you could also decide to increase it all the way to level 3 to get 70 percent crit damage but this is not necessarily the most optimal in terms of dps but therein lies also sort of the beauty of berserkers technique berserkers there's a lot of variety that you can go in here for also getting berserkers technique level one is usually a tad bit easier than trying to cap it out unless you decide to use engraving books Aside from this, Keem Blood Weapon, I don't think I have to explain anything, Garage, Crystal, and Awakening. As I said, Awakening is used to give us more charges and also reduce the cooldown. So we are then able to go back to this again. I'll show this one last time. One entire rotation. And it also doesn't matter if you necessarily use your Red Dust optimally when building your gauge because you're lacking a lot of crit stats and stuff. But this is it. This is fairly simple. This is really easy, and our burst mode gives us 20% attack speed and movement speed and 30% crit rate. This ties in to the 15% crit rate that I have here, and if you topple that off with the red dust crit rate. So red dust and our berserker rage alone gives me 53% crit rate, then I have almost 15% here, so that's around 68% with my set. I am at 83% crit rate if I do not factor back attacks in. So you can see you can get a lot of crit fairly quickly on Berserkers simply by using the Berserkers technique engraving to get the buff and by using Red Dust. Now here's one more thing or what I would ideally or what I would call is the most optimal status or engraving distribution. However, this is going to be fairly expensive to build and unless you have level 12 engravings it might not be as easy to obtain. So what we're running is Berserker's Technique 1, but we're going to get Spirit Absorption level 2. Grudge, fairly self-explanatory. Then we're not going to take Keen Blunt Weapon, although you could technically take it. I, in that regard, would actually not leave it there. Crystal, Awakening, and Raid Captain. Now, what this would do is would put us with spirit absorption giving us eight percent movement speed and our swiftness here giving us nine percent movement speed we are almost capped out at 130 percent so we're missing three percent to cap out a movement speed which makes this a very good opportunity to use raid captain as another damage engraving you can also use keen blood weapon instead of crystal this is a personal decision here since i personally have crystal max at level 12 this is my personal build that I would go for, but remember this is an alt character for me and I did not really want to dunk 100,000 gold into some engraving books just to get that build going. So for me instead, this is what I'm using. Obviously this level, these four points in Keen Blood Weapon are kinda eh, and the heavy armor just happened to be there. I could have gone for Spirit Absorption or any other engraving that works at level one. That is entirely up to you. And that is it for the Brazil's, pardon me, Berserker's Technique Berserker, TLDR. I personally think this is a really fun build, especially after 1415, once you have access to the Relic accessories. If you put a sort of similar stat distribution in here, it's not going to take long, and your boast mode is lasting fairly long. You're going to get it back if you land your Awakening. Again, just see how much build, build up we have. It's almost 50%, simply because of that. And also a secret here 
you can equip gems on Bloody Rush, in case you didn't know. And for most Mayhem Berserkers, this is probably not really a thing, but for Bloody Rush users, I showed you earlier that Bloody Rush itself deals 10 million damage. So using gems there is pretty, pretty recommended. Aside from this, this is all for Berserker's technique. I do hope that you found this helpful. Other than that, I sometimes stream Lost Ark and other games on Twitch, so feel free to check me out on my Twitch channel. The links can be found in the description below. Outside of this, a written format of this can also be found on Icy Veins. I'm writing guides for Icy Veins in case you are familiar with that website. The link to that guide is also going to be found in the description below. Outside of this, I do hope you found this helpful, and I love to see you people on my next stream or next video, so do stay safe, and see ya. Oh, you